Okay, what's up guys? Welcome back. So the engine is in, as some of you well know. Uh, now I'm going to be working on the oil pan. So I have been working on the pan over the past several days. Not really several, a couple different days I did a few different things. There's a lot of planning going into it, so it's taking a while to like get through each step, deciding what I want to do and not just kind of throw it together. So putting a little bit of thought into it. I wanted to fit it all into one video, but I think just to get something out there so you guys have a good update, I'll show you where I'm at today and hopefully you guys enjoy the progress so far. All right, so here I am messing around with the pan, and I left this clip in here intentionally. I recorded this on purpose because I wanted you guys to see this, and this is just me thinking right now. This is what I do, sit here, do some research on the phone, look at different pans and different ideas, and drink a beer, brainstorm, think, 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 think. This is something that a lot of people don't really show, but this is a very important part of the process and this takes a very long time to do it, a lot of planning, and just wanted to add it for context. Right, so I feel like I have a pretty decent plan now for what I want to do with these pans. Um, this is the pan that Cooper sent me and I kind of drew some lines with the screwdriver just brainstorming. So what I think I want to do is cut it flat basically along the bottom section here and that should expose some of these openings. It'll expose this opening, one of them comes down into the outside of where the fil filter section is, and then it comes up through here, out here, and then into here. <clears throat> so this hole through the top comes out into the outer portion of the filter, comes up the center hole, out this hole, through the cooler, unless you have a block off plate, and then back into here, which goes up through the block to the sending unit. So what I think I'm going to do is cut this whole thing off around the whole pan and leave about an inch from the top. I want to leave an inch because it, it's going to make this a little bit stronger. I feel like this little, you know, three eighths of an inch or whatever this is here uh, would warp a little bit easier. So I want to leave a little bit of structure and then weld to this section. So I'm going to cut off the bottom here and what I want to do, and this is what I was doing in the video of brainstorming. So what I want to do is have this come down. And then instead of filling this pocket going through a filter, this is going to have to be cut. So I'm going to have to cut a bunch of junk out of here, modify this some way, weld a cap over it. But basically connect these two channels here, because these are separate ports. I want to connect these somewhere down in here after I cut the bottom off. And then what I'm going to do is put a cooler plate on there that bolts on and then it has a dash 10 out and a dash 10 in. So this is what I'll use for the remote mount filter. Instead of going to a cooler line, it'll go to a remote filter. So it'll come out and then come back in here and this will be blocked off and everything's going to work wonderful. And the other plan is, if you look over here on top of the oil filter, I'm not even close enough. I do have, this engine came with a block off plate. It didn't have a cooler, so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna pull this thing off and I know that this is coming down through the filter up out and then bypassing through this and then going up to the block. So I'm going to use this same plate, cut this entire filter section out of this broken pan, because this pan is broken. So I'm going to cut this entire filter section out, and this is what I'm going to use for the remote mount filter. So I'll put the bypass section on here, and then I'm going to weld two dash 10 AN fittings onto the top. So I'll have an in that's going to go through the filter. It'll come out here, bypass, and then come up and then back to the regular pan. So might seem kind of confusing. Hopefully it will make a lot more sense when it's done.
And this clip here is my very crude way after I cut the pan of identifying where all the high spots were. I cut it with a sawzall and a grinder and I'm just rubbing it on the concrete and here I'm going to be pointing out kind of where some of the high spots are because you can see what's rubbing on the concrete because it's all the opposite direction and you know exactly where the high spots are. So then after that I can just go through, point them all out, figure out where they all are and then hit it with the grinder take down the high spots and then do it again and this is just to kind of get it a little bit more flat than it was it's still not perfect but it's just a nice quick way to get it a little bit straighter alrighty boys so we got some good news this is the new foot pedal that Eastwood sent me and it works perfect so I don't know what was the deal with the other one but it works now and adjusts perfectly, so that's a good thing. Next, I'm kind of getting started on what I want to do with this. So I don't really like all these little ins and outs all the way around. I want to do something that's going to make it a little bit easier for me. So I've been kind of planning everything out, and the sump is going to be on the front here. I'm going to come back about an inch from this section and then come down about five and a half inches. And I also want to come out a couple inches this way. So I'm able to go back to this third hole on the oil side, on the oil filter side of the pan. I say that because these two holes are offset. They don't line up perpendicular to the engine. So this one's back the farthest. I am able to go back this far straight down five and a half inches. So it'll be five and a half inches deep from the mounting side. And then I'll be able to go flat across here. But my issue that I talked about before was the the windage tray. I cut this thing pretty short and the windage tray sticks up about another inch past this. So what I think I'm going to do is make a plate that comes all the way across and then just cut in it so I have all straight edges to work with. I'll have to go around this and weld over this but I want to keep everything as straight as possible and that'll allow me to build some build some up and box it up. So. Uh, I want to show you guys, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll get started on it. I'm going to start with cardboard and make some templates. And one other consideration before we do it is I need to be able to get the oil pan bolts in, of course. So this sump is going to come up and then out, but I have to make sure that I come up high enough and far enough away to be able to get these bolts in. You know, if I came straight out here, I wouldn't be able to put the bolts in. So. Uh, of course that would suck. So I gotta get a little bit going on here. I took this section and kind of uh, I used some Dremel cutoff wheels and some little Dremel grinder bit thing. One of these little spiral Dremel dealies in a roto zip. Uh, and I just kind of cut and notched out this whole thing and the deeper I went the uglier it got so I kind of just stopped. I think it's I think it's big enough but basically the oil comes in here from the block where my finger is and then it's just going to transfer over into this passage and come out this hole right here and then I'm going to use a like a oil cooler plate to go to the remote filter and then it'll come back in here and then through the other bottom hole back to the block so that's the plan basically just wanted to open this thing up big enough to transfer the oil over and then I'm going to put a plate over the top of this so it's a little passage. Also I used a flap disc and went around as much as I could to kind of clean this thing up so I can weld to it and I think what I'm going to do is go throw this in the oven. Wife's not home so now's a better time than ever. Don't tell her. Don't let her know. Don't like post this on the internet or anything. Okay? All right, so I did make a little catch pan with some tin foil around it, and we're gonna get this thing up to 400 degrees and leave it in there for about a half hour. So the reason I'm doing this is to try to boil some of that oil out of there, cook some of the oil out that might be soaked into the pan, so it's a really clean surface to weld to. So I got this uh, template pretty much cut now to go over the bottom here and then I'm going to cut out the middle of it but before I do that I want to try to weld this hole shut so 
let's get started on that. So I was just going to do the plate over the top of there, but then I'd have to weld all the way around here on the inside of it, and I it's going to be hard to get in there. So I think what I'm going to do is just try to fill it, cover it up from this top side. I might have to actually make a plate to go in there to weld that in, but let's try it. Okay, so that one might have actually kind of worked. I did it on that one just to kind of practice it. So I'm going to knock it down a little bit, and we'll maybe try to do the other ones. I might try to put a plate or something in there, but it's a start. So you can actually see the oil bubbling out of there. It'll like be going fine, and then all of a sudden it hits a spot, and it just like explodes all dirty, and you can see oil bubbling out. So spent quite a bit of time on this, uh, but I managed to get it clean to the point where it would actually stop bubbling oil. I mean, it was it was pretty bad. I mean, what, which makes sense. I mean, this is an oil passage, so it had pressurized oil in it. So there might be a little bit more than there would be sitting just in the pan. So what I'm going to do next is I'll measure and notch out a section for that so when I lay this section down over the top I'll be able to weld the whole thing all the way around. What I did do is mark some lines inside here so I'm going to go ahead and cut that and then basically this is going to be my my outer template and then I'm going to build build the rest of the pan up and away from this piece so this will be my initial template and we'll go from here. I think I said it already but the reason I'm doing it is I don't want to have to deal with all these edges here, in and out, in and out. So I'm just gonna have it come in, it'll be a flat edge, and then I'm basically just gonna build like a box. I'm gonna go up like another inch here, box here to clear the windage tray, and then I'm gonna do like five and a half sump right here. So it's gonna come probably back a little bit, be five and a half deep from the bolt side. And yeah, so you guys will see, it should be pretty decent, uh, but that should really help uh, using the clean metal and just using straight edges to kind of box this thing together and weld it up. And the template that I'm using is actually from the cardboard of this aluminum sheet that I got. This is a 2 by 3 foot sheet, 3 sixteenths, and this thing's pretty nice. So this is the aluminum I'm going to be using for the pan. I have plenty of material here so I can mess it up a couple times. This stuff's pretty thick, 3 sixteenths, same thickness of the actual pan. So. That's what I'm making it out of. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Stick around for the rest of this build. Should be pretty fun. Hopefully we can get it going pretty soon. Yeah.